Top, B.I., Wan Ho, and Yang Kian Suk. What do all of these top celebrities have in common? Well, the answer is they all got involved with a K-pop trainee by the name of Han So Hee, and they all paid the price for it. Whether it's facing false allegations, engaging in illicit affairs, or participating in illegal activities, getting tangled into Han So Hee's web of chaos has brought about the demise of numerous K-pop celebrities, groups, and even CEOs. And with three, now soon to be four drug scandals under her belt, you'd honestly be hard pressed to find a K-pop drug scandal that didn't somehow involve this infamous trainee. So who the heck is Han So Hee, and how could a mere trainee like her bring about so much trouble? Greetings, professors! Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the one and only Han So Hee, and her tragic transformation from being a once promising trainee to becoming the literal definition of a hot mess. But of course, Han So Hee isn't the only hot mess out there, because I too can be an absolute mess, especially in the kitchen. Which is why I really wanted to take some time to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a service that makes preparing and cooking your meals so much easier. So here's how it works. Every week, I just go and select my favorite meals from your weekly menu, and then HelloFresh will send me a package with everything that I need to cook the meals. It already has the sauces, the fresh pre-proportioned ingredients, and the recipes. So literally, all you have to do is to lay out all the ingredients and get to cooking. Yup, it's really that simple. The recipes are also really easy to follow, and best of all, the meals actually taste great. Like, I was surprised that I was able to make such delicious food on my own. And to be honest, ever since starting HelloFresh, I think I've actually gained some confidence in the kitchen. I also love the fact that everything already comes pre-proportioned because it just makes things so much more convenient. Like I don't have to be weighing stuff or like guessing how much I need. And it also means that I can try out more different foods without having leftover items in my fridge. Which, speaking of trying out different foods, HelloFresh also updates their menu every week with a wide variety of menu options, and they even have seasonal meals. So for instance, Halloween is fast approaching, and HelloFresh actually has themed meals like bubbling bean Jackie Pea and the slippery slimy pork spaghetti worms, which I'll definitely be ordering this week. So I can't recommend HelloFresh enough, and if you'd like to try it out for yourself, then you can scan my QR code here or click on the link in the description to get 60% off your first box and 25% off your next 8 boxes. This is honestly an amazing deal, so I'm gonna be putting in my order immediately, and thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So Han So Hee's journey into the K-pop industry started all the way back in 2011, when she auditioned for JYP Entertainment at the tender age of 16. Thanks to her amazing voice, she was able to win first place at the audition. But for unknown reasons, she never ended up signing with JYP. Guess they really dodged a bullet there. Instead, the very next year, she competed on the NBC audition program, Birth of a Great Star Season 3. There, so he managed to catch the eye of the judges and advanced all the way to the top 24 before getting eliminated. Whether we like to admit it or not, it was obvious that So He possessed quite a lot of natural talent. So it was no surprise that after the show, she received love calls from many different agencies. And in 2013, she finally made the decision to join Pledis Entertainment as a trainee. Unfortunately, So He did not enjoy her time at Pledis Entertainment. In an Instagram story, she revealed that managers would spy on trainees with CCTV cameras to make sure that they weren't sleeping or lazing around. And so he just could not get behind this strict training system. So she ended up leaving just a few months later. Following this, she would join a string of other agencies including Source Music, where she trained with the members of G-Friend, and Jellyfish Entertainment, where she trained with the members of Gugudan. 
The problem was most of these companies would have obviously had similarly strict training systems as Pledis. And if you need to know one thing about Han So Hee, it is that following rules isn't exactly her strong suit. Han So Hee was known to have a rebellious personality, and it is also believed that this was around the time that she first began experimenting with alcohol and drugs. So it's no surprise that she didn't manage to last long in any of these companies. In fact, an anonymous employee even revealed that Han So Hee only lasted a month in his company before getting kicked out due to quote, personal problems. So this brings us to 2016. By now, five years had already passed, and many of the people that So He had once trained with had already become successful artists. Yet she herself was back at square one, with no company and no debut in sight. Now at this point, most trainees in her position would have probably chosen one of two paths. Some might choose to continue auditioning for more companies, while others might leave the entertainment industry and pursue another career. But Han So Hee chose neither. Instead, she continued to linger around the entertainment scene, not as a trainee, idol, or member of staff, but rather as the K-pop industry's resident drug dealer. Unlike her idol career, her drug dealing business seemed to take off immediately, and it wasn't long before she was distributing drugs to some of the top celebrities in Korea. Perhaps one reason why she was so successful was because she had built up many connections in the industry thanks to her years of training at different companies. But on top of that, she also took up a job at a high-end brothel in Gangnam known as a tempido. Now for those of you who are wondering, tempido translates to 10%, meaning only the most beautiful 10% of women can work there. Now, as you can imagine, these brothels would be hella expensive, which meant that So He had the opportunity to service wealthy celebrities, businessmen, and CEOs, who not only funded her drug habits, but introduced her to even more people within the entertainment industry. And one of her most notable clients happened to be none other than Yang Hyun Sok, the then CEO of YG Entertainment. Nani? That's right guys, So Hee was never a YG trainee, and this was actually how she first became associated with the company. According to court documents, Yang Hyun Suk was introduced to So Hee through the brothel owner, Miss Jop. The pair would then continue a sexual relationship, with Yang Hyun Suk regularly visiting the brothel to meet So Hee. Additionally, the pair would also communicate via instant message, and Yang Hyun Suk even gave So Hee many free tickets to YG concerts, which might explain how So Hee managed to come into contact with so many of YG's artists. However, it also seemed like she might have just had a natural affinity with people from this company. Because while she was seeing Yang Hyun Suk, she also came into contact with Big Bang member Top on a completely separate occasion. According to news reports, Top first saw So Hee at a cafe in Cheongdamdong and was so captivated by her beauty that he obtained her number from an acquaintance and proceeded to contact her. Side note, I have no idea if Top knew about her relationship with his boss, but I can only imagine how awkward things must have been when he first found out. Regardless, Top and So Hee ended up dating from October of 2016 to sometime in mid-2017, when their relationship was cut short thanks to a huge drug scandal. The scandal first began after a stylist from YG Entertainment was caught smoking weed in Japan, which caused police to launch a full-scale investigation against the entire company. Now initially, they were unable to find evidence against any of the artists under YG. However, they then received a tip from an arrested drug dealer that Han So Hee was involved in his drug distribution scheme. And upon doing more investigation into Han So Hee, they discovered that she had actually been smoking weed with her boyfriend Top on multiple occasions throughout their relationship. But as it turns out, Top wasn't even the only YG artist who had been in contact with So Hee because police then discovered chat logs that showed Icon member B.I. had also attempted to purchase LSD from Sohi. And upon questioning, Sohi admitted that she had indeed delivered drugs to Icon's dormitory. 
As more and more YG artists became linked to Sohee and her drug use, Yang Hyun Suk realized that if he didn't want his entire company to go up in flames, then he needed to put a stop to this investigation. And the best way to do that was to get Sohee to shut up. So on the 23rd of August 2016, Yang Hyun Suk summoned Sohee in for a meeting. Nobody knows exactly what was discussed, but after this suspicious meeting, Sohee immediately retracted her statements about delivering drugs to Icon's dormitory. Yang Hyun Suk also sent Sohee away to the US for three months, starting from December of 2016 to February of 2017, which coincidentally was just in time for Big Bang to wrap up their promotions and for Top to enlist in the military. That's suspicious. That's weird. Because of Yang Hyun Suk's efforts, the investigations were greatly delayed, and the case dragged on for years. But in the end, Top and B.I. were still found guilty and sentenced to two and four years of probation respectively for their drug use. Additionally, Yang Hyun Suk's shady actions eventually came to light. And after significant public pressure, he was forced to step down as the CEO of YG Entertainment in mid-2019. As for Sohee, she was found guilty of smuggling and distributing drugs. Despite being at the center of this entire controversy, she somehow managed to get away with just a slap on the wrist. Police never investigated her for any other potential drug dealings, and in June of 2017, she ended up getting sentenced to just four years of probation, marking her first, but certainly not her last, drug charge. Throughout the rest of 2017, Han So Hee continued to get into various controversies, mainly surrounding her feminist beliefs. Now don't get me wrong, I myself identify as a feminist, and I think that feminism can be a great movement. But the problem with So Hee was that she was using her brand of feminism to hate on transgendered individuals and demonize all men. And she even declared herself a member of radical feminist group WOMAD, which had previously been investigated for posting revenge porn against men. Han So Hee's extremist views caused her to get into frequent online arguments with celebrities like transgender model Harisu, actor Yua In, and influencer Kang Hyuk Min. In the case of Kang Hyuk Min, the beef began because of differences over their views on feminism. But instead of engaging in a normal and respectful debate, So Hee escalated the situation by posting on her social media that Kang Hyuk Min was a potential rape. Police later determined that these accusations were completely false, but Kang Hyuk Min continued to receive death threats and accusations from the radical feminist community. And in the end, he filed a lawsuit against So Hee and 10,000 netizens for defamation. Sadly though, this wouldn't be the only time that So Hee made false accusations. Because in 2019, she and her then girlfriend Jung Da Eun did the exact same thing to K pop boy group Monster X. For some context, Jung Da Eun is a D-rated reality star who had previously appeared on the show Ulsang Generation back in the late 2000s. And this was actually where she became friends with her co-star Won Ho, who later went on to become a member of Monster X. Fast forward to October of 2019, Won Ho and Da Eun's careers had obviously taken very different turns, and the two had seemingly fallen out of contact. Instead, Dan met and began dating Sohi. And the reason why I use air quotes is because sometimes this couple would claim that they were in an actual relationship, while other times they would claim that they were just putting on a business lesbian performance. So none of us knows if this relationship was ever even real or if it was just another publicity stunt. But regardless, what we do know for sure was that this couple bonded over their love for drama, drama, drama. And not even a month after they started dating, they decided that they were going to launch a hate campaign against ex-friend Wanho and his group Monster X. On the 29th of October, Jung Da Eun suddenly claimed that Wanho owed her money. The couple also accused Wanho of committing numerous crimes during his youth, including violence, theft, and even drug use, which is pretty ironic coming from these two. The scandal caused police to launch a full-scale investigation into the supposed drug use, which proved to be completely fake, and Wanho was cleared of all of the drug charges. 
However, he admitted to having a troubled past and ended up leaving Monster X as a result of the controversy. But Han So Hee and Jung Da Eun still weren't done with this poor boy group just yet. Because Han So Hee then posted this screenshot of messages from a married man who claimed that his wife was having an affair with another Monster X member, Shonu. Fortunately, this screenshot was later also proven to be taken out of context as Shonu had already broken up the relationship as soon as he found out about the woman's marital status. We really don't know if Sohee and Da Eun had more plans to take out even more Monster X members, but if there's a silver lining to this entire situation, at least this toxic couple were so toxic that even they couldn't handle each other for long. And before they could cause any more damage to Monster X or any other K-pop group, this disastrous pair ended up imploding on themselves. In December of 2019, not even three months after their relationship began, Sohi and Da Eun broke up after an alleged domestic violence incident, which Sohi obviously couldn't resist the urge to post about online. Obviously, none of us knows exactly what went down behind the scenes, and while many people have claimed that this was just a publicity stunt, there is also a chance that the incident could be real. But regardless, I think we can all agree that abused or not, it was still for the best that these two women broke up. So that marked the end of Sohi and Da Eun's disastrous relationship, but it sure didn't mark the end of Sohi's destructive lifestyle and attention-seeking behavior. In July of 2020, Sohee was booked on her second drug charge. Now if you recall, at this point, Sohee was still on probation because of her YG drug scandal. So she was having to do random drug tests as part of her probation. And it was during one of the urine tests that they discovered she had amphetamines in her system. Instead of just admitting to doing the drugs, Sohee spun some ridiculous story about how her urine cup had supposedly fallen into the toilet and gotten contaminated by other people's urine. But this proved to be impossible because the only other people who had used that toilet were all male, and the urine sample that Sohee submitted was clearly from a female. So yeah, she was found guilty and sentenced to one and a half years in prison. But as if all of that wasn't embarrassing enough, news reports stated that she caused a huge commotion during sentencing by cursing at the judge and yelling at staff and other inmates on the prison bus. Fast forward to 2022, Han So Hee had finally finished serving her prison sentence, but she was back in court once again. This time as a victim slash star witness in Yang Kyun Suk's intimidation trial. I swear the courtroom is literally Han So Hee's second home. Anyways, this new case involved the secret meeting between Yang Kyun Suk and Han So Hee that took place during the YG drug scandal. So on the 23rd of August 2016, Yang Kyun Suk summoned So Hee in for a meeting. Nobody knows exactly what was discussed, but after this suspicious meeting, Sohee immediately retracted her statements about delivering drugs to Icon's dormitory. Well, this meeting was being brought back into the spotlight because Yang Hyun Suk was now facing charges for threats of retaliation. In other words, it is believed that during the meeting, he might have threatened Han Sohee into helping with BI's cover-up. According to Han So Hee, she claimed that Yang Hyun Suk had confiscated her phone and threatened to ruin her career if she didn't cooperate. Which, don't get me wrong, I definitely do not support threats of any kind. But honestly, if that's what he said, then that's by far one of the shittiest threats I've ever heard. Because you can't ruin a career that doesn't even exist. <laughs> And you know what's the funniest thing? It seemed like the judges also had these exact same thoughts. Because Yang Hyun Suk ended up being acquitted of the charge. Not because the judges didn't believe that he made a threat, but rather because they felt like the threats he did make simply weren't scary enough. I mean, the judge literally said, The exchanges between Yang Hyun Suk and Han So Hee do not adequately indicate that Han So Hee was under severe pressure. As of now, the prosecution has filed an appeal against the ruling, and Yang Hyun Suk's intimidation trial is expected to continue. The problem is, the prosecution might experience a bit more trouble now that they're missing their star witness Han So Hee. But why would So Hee be missing, you might ask? Well, 
because just a week ago she was busted in yet another K-pop drug scandal. Ah shit! Here we go again. On the 21st of October, police discovered that a drug package had entered Korea. Upon tracing the whereabouts of this package, they discovered that it had been delivered to a high-end brothel in Gangnam. Sound familiar? She also took up a job at a high-end brothel in Gangnam, known as a Tempelo. Since then, police have linked several high-profile individuals to the investigation, including, of course, our girl Han So Hee, as well as actor Yi Sun Kyun, socialite Hwang Hana, and most incredibly, Han So Hee's ex-girlfriend, Dan. Nice how everything comes full circle, doesn't it? So currently, it looks like Han So Hee might be facing yet another drug charge. And since we're on the topic of drug charges, I wanted to make this clear. All the celebrities who did drugs with Han So Hee are fully responsible for their own actions. So if you're one of those fans who thinks that your oppa can do no wrong, then um, just know that I do not agree with you. That being said, Han So Hee is clearly the common denominator here. She just seems to bring about trouble wherever she goes. And considering her long list of crimes and other controversies, it's no surprise that she has a terrible reputation in the K-pop industry. Hey, what's up? I'm going to talk about 기사로만 날 접하니까 기사는 되게 자극적이니까. So he herself knows this and claims that she thrives off the negative attention she receives. But based on her reliance on drugs and her clear mental health issues, I truly doubt if she's really as happy as she claims to be. I know I've been dunking on Sohee this entire video, but honestly, it can't be a happy existence constantly receiving so many death threats and hate comments from K-pop fans. And personally, I believe that this whole villain persona she's putting on might just be a way for her to cope with the bitterness and sadness she feels due to her failed K-pop career. If you really think about it, Sohee's situation is actually pretty sad. So I truly hope that she will eventually find some purpose in life and get the help that she so desperately needs. Thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to watch reaction videos and other bonus content, then be sure to check that out on my Patreon.